Okay, here we go, Naomi. Turn a little more profile. Naomi, hold your left hand onto the tree a little. Watching Naomi Campbell frolic in the Caribbean is like watching something too striking to be real. One, two, three, nine. Like a sexy goddess of the sea. This is exclusive videotape of the mega model like you've never seen before. Turn a little more to me and smile there a little bit. Landing the interview with Naomi Campbell was a complete fluke. Of course, she is one of the most incredible models in history, in the history of fashion. So uh, I was at Vogue magazine one day interviewing the great fashion editor, Grace Coddington. And when we wrapped the interview, I'm following Grace back to her office. And I just threw out, hey Grace, I'd love to go on a shoot with you sometime. And she didn't skip a beat and said, well, I'm shooting Naomi Campbell next week. Uh, you want to come? And I actually froze. You see photographs of models, and they make it look easy. They look gorgeous, wearing beautiful clothes. And in our head, we just imagine that they stand in front of the camera, and the photographer snaps the picture, and that's it. But there's a lot of work that goes into it. What I witnessed those three days is how dedicated she is to her work. We joined Vogue in Jamaica as the supermodel was photographed in these eye-popping bikinis. We have to go have lunch because the hairdresser's having a swim. Yeah, that's beautiful, wait. World-famous photographer Herb Ritz was part of a superstar team that created a magical layout. It's interesting how everything comes together and everyone collaborates to make the picture happen, which is great. The theme, Naomi all alone on an island, looking sensational. She's got it all. She's like, probably they're all going to kill me, but she's the best model I've ever worked with, ever. <laughs> they're going to kill I you. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi will push it to the limit for just the right shot. And here's something you may not know about her. She can't swim. Help me! You have no idea how excited I was. I was excited. I was nervous. I didn't want to be in the way, but of course, always at the beginning of everything is I've got to get the story for Inside Edition. Watching Naomi work is incredible. The way she handles her body. She knows exactly what to do in front of the camera. It's all in a day's work for the woman who at 25 has been in front of the camera for more than a decade. I didn't think of being a model. I really wanted to be a dancer and that's what I trained for and I guess that's what the opportunity came to me, so I accepted it and I tried it and it worked. And boy, did it ever work. She has incredible fame. And what does she say to autograph seekers? I sometimes say, you don't want it. Oh, you know, it's like they say, you Naomi on the street, and sometimes I say no. Smile, that you look beautiful there. During this shoot, we found Naomi professional and charming, but she has a reputation for being difficult. I think that most women that we, that we admire, Madonna, Janet Jackson, Sharon Stone, Barbara Streisand, whoever, Oprah, I think when a woman stands for her ground and wants to fight for something and do it and be right at it and try and get it 100% right or perfect as much as you can, a woman gets called a b for that. And when a guy does it, it's a hard working guy. You know, I don't care if I'm called a or not. I'm trying to fight for my integrity and to do things right and to do it with my belief and that's what's important to me. When people talk about her and talk about her reputation, I'm always happy to be able to say that I was there. I watched her work and I watched that she wasn't difficult, that she was cooperative. A lot of what you hear, I just didn't see. And I was there for three days. But I had to ask her about her reputation. There was no way that I could be with Naomi Campbell and not ask her particularly at that time, about her reputation. And what she said to me is really important, and that is, is that the playing field is not level for men and women. And so she was way ahead of a lot of the things that we talk about now. Globetrotter is a term this beauty is all too familiar with, so she cherishes her downtime. I like to stay home, watch videos, or go to movies, have dinner. Bikinis were made for a body like this, but you can't call Naomi a health nut. She eats what she wants. I don't go to the gym, I box. I have a, right, a good jab, a good, I have a good jab. Since the shoot we did at Inside Edition, the behind the scenes shoot, 
things have really progressed in terms of black women uh, in magazines, on magazine covers. Uh, back then, it was rare. She understands uh, her place in fashion. She understands that she's a trailblazer. She understands that there are a lot of young black models behind her who she wants them to have more than she had. So she doesn't mind speaking up. What she cares about is that black models have an equal opportunity, that they have an opportunity to be in shows, to be on covers, to be in layouts, to have cosmetic contracts, to have uh, fashion commercial contracts. That matters to her. So you can imagine how excited I am. I'm about to meet the Godfather of Soul. I think I spoke to three or four of his press people, and each one of them told me the exact same thing. They said, you must refer to him as Mr. Brown. Do not call him James. And uh, so of course, you know, they put the fear of the Lord in you, and, and that's all you're thinking about. That's all you're thinking about is you're about to go meet the Godfather of Soul. Do not call him James Brown. So I'm thinking as I walk, walk in the room, I've got to call him Mr. Brown. So I walk in, I introduce myself, and I say something like, hello, Mr. Brown. He says, call me James. <laughs> but before the show even starts, we're actually going to go backstage into the dressing room to talk to the godfather of soul himself. Hello. How are you? It is a pleasure to meet you. How are you? Fine, thank you. I'm Les Trent from Inside Edition. And the one thing I remember most about him was just, he was so warm and inviting. He, it was almost as though he, uh, he felt like he was a mentor to this, in his eyes, young black reporter. Because <laughs> he, sort of, he sort of spoke to me in that, in that sort of tone where he was just like a fatherly figure giving advice. People say that you look incredibly young, especially out there. I mean, obviously this keeps you young. I thank God and her keep me young. <laughs> we got a beautiful little son, so I think the mixture is great, and thank God for that. But thank you for the compliment. You ever get tired of it? Well, I, I, I get tired if the business don't go correct. You know, um, uh, on somebody I really go through it with is me, Mr. Bobby, when I'm a manager, um, and. Uh, we want to do things, and um, you know, we want to do things 25 years ago that just happened today. I mean, you know, people don't move fast, you know, not when it's positive. Right. They move fast when it's negative, you know. But uh, we want to do what we can to keep things straight. And I watch Inside Edition a lot too, my wife. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, we watch it a lot. It's great, great, and very informative, and very educational and entertaining too. And we love you over there. Do you think you'll? Do you think you'll ever retire? Yeah, I retired when the God put the last breath, put, put the last breath out of me. Now, I may not be coming across the stage because your legs go, because I was an athlete and uh, your legs leave. But uh, I won't ever quit because we got projects that, uh, we got some projects that, kind of, it's like a, we're over at a gin mill, turning out the different things. We want to turn out complete artists, you know. Like I took my wife. Your wife I, is an artist now. That's right. And, and the thing about, and she answers the name of Tommy Ray. Um, talented people that don't get a complete shot at it, you know, and, and they need that. The Apollo Theater is always the Apollo Theater with me, and it's very important to people uh, because it's a mecca of opportunity for people that don't think they can make it. Now, I didn't make it through the Apollo, but we need that concept. We had that same thing in Augusta, Georgia called the Lenox Theater, and that's the way I made it, being shown to the people. So we've got to give our kids a break. You wonder why? The, you, you, you find a lot of crime and and uh, uh, criminal uh, things happening to different people in different areas uh, because they don't have anything to do. Uh, they don't have anything on their mind. Young people don't have anything on their mind. What you what they can have on their mind? You know, you watch the war, you watch all this other stuff. We've got to push entertainment, more sports, and uh, more family discipline. Well, I mean, it's it's an incredible feeling when you think that you you've spoken to this icon and then. Six months later, you know, you're you're covering stories about his funeral. Um, it was um, sometimes in this job, you just you just pinch yourself. You say, "Wow, I, I I can't believe that I that I met this person. I can't believe I was sitting right across from them." And 
in how, how warm and engaging they were. And um, it's just, it, it's, um, you know, it's a bittersweet feeling you, you, to, to meet somebody who is such an icon and then to lose them so soon afterwards. He really was, he was an icon. He was, um, he was a civil rights leader. He had a message in his music that was empowering for African Americans back in the 60s and 70s. And it was, it was just incredible. You know what, guys, have a great show tonight. It is a pleasure to meet you, sir. Well, I hope you live 200 years, and I live 200 years minus one day. Yeah. <laughs> so I never know beautiful people like you on an inside edition that passed away. You're a legend, and you haven't stopped. How do you stay current? Hmm. How do you stay, keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening? And I'll tell you this, you know fashion, you know music, you know what's going on. How do you how do you stay involved? I hope that I do have my finger on that. I'm not sure. I hope so. Um, I think you do. I mean, you know, is it are you reading magazines? What, what, how, how does how does Aretha stay um, current and, and keep us excited? Growth. It's the growth element. That's that's what it is. Uh, I certainly don't want to be dated by any means, and it's the growth. I, constant and evolving growth. So when I got the assignment to interview her, I was both excited and nervous. I was excited because it's the great Aretha Franklin. I was nervous because it was the great Aretha Franklin, but it was incredible. It's one of the greatest interviews I've ever done in my career. She has a very down home way about her. And I was telling her that my father's from the South and a bit about my mother and how I grew up in Detroit. And she really appreciated it and connected to that. I think she felt that there was a similarity, though she's much older, a similarity in uh, our values. It was a really, really hot day when I interviewed her. And I had heard uh, stories of how she doesn't like to perform in air conditioning, that she likes the room to be basically hot. And the second I walked into the hotel suite, it was burning up. And, but she looked cool as a cucumber. She was totally relaxed. The most exciting thing musically to me right now is my new album that's coming out uh, in January. It's going to be produced by Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, and a few cuts I'm going to produce myself. Burt Bacharach has some things in it, and uh, other writers from Detroit have one or two things in there. But the music, it's just the music that I love so much. And it sounds like, from what you're telling me, listening to people, that it's a real melting pot. It's a cool yes, mix. Yes, it is. You've got a buffet and a plethora of good music. What I really found generous and kind of Aretha is how she complimented Kelly Clarkson, a contestant on American Idol. Aretha thought that she was great. She loved her voice, she loved her performance style, and she basically predicted that she would be a star. Kelly, I think, um, certainly has the potential to be a very enduring uh, and established artist and a favorite. She had a combination of things. Uh, she is a very likable personality and I like that and uh, of course she's a very good singer and uh, the song selection was great and she just kind of impressed me as someone that Broadway might be calling uh, and or a pop recording artist that was the way uh, she impressed me really. If Aretha Franklin who has seen them all says that you're a great singer and you're bound for greatness you can basically take it to the bank. Aretha thought Justin Guarini was really charming. She thought he had that special something that makes the young girls swoon. Justin is uh, a crowd pleaser. Um, if I were the age of the little girls, I might have been squealing and screaming myself. But I just thought he was really cute. He had a lot of class and uh, would love for him to open for me sometime. And, um, Does he know that? I don't think so. When Aretha Franklin died, I was uh, heartbroken on two accounts, that she is one of the greatest singers ever. So that was sad. But also, Aretha Franklin is Detroit. 
her soul is in Detroit. And she's a homegrown girl. And so the city uh, really was devastated by her passing. Aretha Franklin had the opportunity in her career to live anywhere in the world, but she chose to always maintain Detroit as her home. It's because she loved the city. She loved everything about the city. Her father had a church in Detroit. She started singing in the church in Detroit. Her family was in Detroit. She lived there her entire career, and so the love that she gave Detroit, she got back in death. It is exactly why the lines were down the block, because people felt like Aretha Franklin was one of them. She was grand. She was glorious. She was bigger than life. But in truth, she was a Detroit girl. Lastly, are you still having fun? Absolutely. If I weren't, I would be sitting at home, cooking, watching the soap operas, and that would be it. Yes, absolutely. I'm having a wonderful time. What a career. What a career. Yes.